Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course, Section 1 Interactive User Experiences. In this video, we are going to take a look at Topic 1 Designing a Multimedia Course Summary. When designing a multimedia course summary, we can visit Glogster.com. If you do not have an account at Glogster.com, you can click on Create an Account to create one, or sign up using your Facebook account if you have one. If you do not have an account on Facebook, you can create a Glogster account by filling in the necessary information to start blogging. You can create a blog like this one or similar. We can add some text by going to Tools, Text. We choose a template where we want to add the text. When you've selected one, click on Use it. We move to the desired location and add the text. We double click on the text and choose the font, the type of letter we want to add and the size just as in any other text editor. If you want to add a hyperlink, we highlight the text and copy the URL and paste it right there. If you want to delete the text, we click on the bin icon and it is deleted. We can also add some graphics. We navigate to Tools, Graphics. There are static graphics and animated ones. We can add a static arrow because there are plenty of animated ones already. We have the arrow here and we can change the colour. We can change the colour of this one. There are options through which we can place the image forwards or backwards. Another option is to duplicate it. The following button allows us to instantly place an image forwards, backwards or duplicate it. We can add another one like this. We can also add images. We can upload images from our computer. Now, when we upload an image, they appear on our blog account and we do not need to look them up on our computer. We can also change the wall of our blog. We go to Tools, Wall, we click on the wall to be used, and then on Use It. For example, we click on this one, and the wall changes. If you want to undo changes, we click on the Undo icon. We can also add some audio. We have options to upload it, make a link, or record from our computer mic. We can also choose a player where we want to insert the audio. All the players have a play icon. There is some audio in this blog. We can add some animated icons next to the audio player to show that there is something to listen to. We can also add videos. The same options appears in the audio. The difference is that we have to record them from a webcam. The last option within tools is to add files. The file appears at the bottom of the blog, as it is shown here. So, when we finish designing the blog, click on Save. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course, Section 1 Interactive User Experiences. In this video, we are going to take a look at Topic 2, Embedding a Glogster in Moodle. We are going to finalise the Glogster page created in the previous task by clicking on Save and then on Save again. The Glog should be saved in a few seconds. We can then tag our Glog, or choose not to, and click on Finish Saving. Click on Dashboard because we need to copy the HTML code to embed the Glog in our Moodle course. Then click on Embed this Glog. We can choose the size of the blog to embed, and choose the second one, or simply adjust it by typing in the width and the height. Click on Copy to copy the HTML code, and enter your Moodle course. We are now going to edit the summary section. We click on the Edit Summary icon. We click on the Edit HTML Source icon within the summary block. We paste the HTML code that we have copied before. We right click and click on Paste, and then on Update. The blog appears in the summary block, then we click on Save Changes. Now the blog appears in our Moodle course. We scroll down and can see that all the elements we have added are here. If we click on this icon, we can see the blog in full screen mode. When we press the Escape key, we can go back to normal mode. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course, Section 1 Interactive User Experiences in this video, we are going to take a look at Topic 3, Creating a Crossword with 3D Images. If you do not have Hot Potatoes installed on your machine, you can download it from this website. After installing the software, we are going to choose the Red Potato Menu option to create a crossword puzzle. Click on the title block and type in the title of the exercise, then navigate to Manage Grid, Automatic Grid Maker. Type in all the words to design the crossword puzzle. In this case, we designed the crossword puzzle using 3D animals. When you're done writing the names of the animals, click on Make the Grid. Here we have a grid with the names of animals that we typed in. Now we need to add clues. We're going to add 3D images as clues, which you can get from a website that stocks free 3D images of animals. Access the following website to download 3D images of animals. You can type in the names of the animals that you need in the search box. 
These are the results of the animals we need. We can see different animals available here, such as a penguin, cow, and zebra. Right click on the penguin, then on Save Image As, and save the image to your computer. Repeat the same process for the remaining animals, and upload those saved images to your Moodle crossword. Go back to Hot Potatoes and click on Add Clues to upload the images. We click on Crocodile, and navigate to Insert, Picture, Pitch from Local File. Click on the picture to insert it, and then click Open. All the pictures were inserted, and we can see the HTML code next to their names. When done, click on OK. Then, we navigate to File, Create Web Page, Standard Format. Click on View the exercise in my browser and see the activity here. When we click on the numbers, we can see the picture that we have already uploaded in the crossword puzzle. We can now start working with our crossword puzzle. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course, Section 1 Interactive User Experiences. In this video, we are going to take a look at Topic 4 Uploading the Crossword to Moodle. Before uploading the crossword to Moodle, we need to download and enable the Hot Pot module. You can download this from the following website. We are going to download the file from the web page mentioned earlier in order to install the Hot Potatoes module. In this case, what we need is option C. Download the file and save it to a convenient location. Next, extract the files to your module block. Look for your Moodle's installation server folder, the Moodle folder, and within that Moodle, look for mod, where it should be extracted to. As you can see, in this case, the Hot Pot module is already unzipped and enabled. We are now going to enter our Moodle course and choose the weekly outline section where we want to insert the activity. Click on Add an Activity or Resource, click on Hot Potatoes, and then click on Add. We can either complete the name block or choose to use the name of the activity from the Hot Potatoes file. In this case, we get the name from the source file, so we will not type in the name here. Click on Add, and then on Browse, and look for the file to be uploaded. Then click on the Hot Potatoes activity, and then on Open, and upload this file. Since we have inserted images into our crossword, we need to upload them to our Moodle course. To do that, click on Add and upload an image for all the clues that we inserted into our crossword. After uploading all the images, click on Save and Display to work on our crossword within our Moodle course. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course, Section 1 Interactive User Experiences. In this video, we are going to take a look at Topic 5 Designing a Questionnaire in Google Docs. Enter Google Docs and create an account. After doing so, go to Create, choose Form, and let's design a simple survey for students. Add a title, let's say Survey, followed by a simple description or instruction. In the block below, you can add relevant questions and their likely choices. This survey is about studying habits, so we enter pertinent questions here. In the question title, add some short questions. For the question type, choose multiple choice. We type in morning, afternoon, evening and weekend. Then click on done. If you want to add another question, click on the add item button. This time, let's try checkboxes for how they'd like to study. With the options of writing, while listening to music, while watching TV and so on. And then we click on done. You could try adding as many different types of questions as you like. Next up, let's change the background theme of our survey. Click on Theme, you'll find several options already available. Let's try this one. It looks good enough. Next, we need to embed the survey on our page. You can do this through More Actions Embed. Copy the embed link. Go to your Moodle course. Select the Weekly Outline section where we're going to embed the form. And click on Add an Activity or Resource. Add an assignment here. Go to Assignment, Add. Complete the assignment name block and enter a description for it. To add a description, click on the Edit HTML Source icon, paste the link and click on Update. You'll see the form that we just created on our Google Docs account embedded here. Click on Save and Display and your survey will appear on your Moodle course page. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 2 Surveys, Statistics and Charts In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 1 designing a survey. 
we are going to enter our Moodle course and choose the weekly outline section where we want to insert the activity. Click on Add an Activity or Resource and select Feedback. In this activity, we are going to design a survey. Click on Add. Fill out the name and description blocks. Something simple should do for now. We're going to survey our students on how much time they spend studying. You can click on Display Description on Course Page to make a detailed description visible. Within Feedback Options, click on the drop down menu next to Record User Names and select Users' Names will be logged and shown with answers to log and display users and their respective answers. You'll need to complete the After Submitting block to set up a page to be displayed after someone completes the survey. Something simple like Thanks for answering should do for now. Then click on Save and Display. We are going to edit questions next, so click on Edit Questions. Within Add Question to Activity, we are going to choose Numeric Answer, then click on Add Question to Activity. Check the required field. We want students to have to answer all the questions in the survey. Within the question block, type in your question. How many hours do you spend at school? Set a range from 0 to 10. As you can see, this is defaulted to the first position in our feedback form. Then click on Save Question. We can repeat the same process for subsequent questions. Within Add Question to Activity, we are going to choose Numeric Answer. Then click on Add Question to Activity. Check the required field and add the question How many hours do you spend studying at home in the question block? And set a range from 0 to 10. In the Position block, we can set this as either the first or the second question and then click on Save Question. As you can see, we finished setting up some questions. Namely, how many hours do you spend at school? How many hours do you spend studying at home? How many hours do you spend studying online? How many hours do you spend studying during weekends? You can go back to your course now, the survey is ready. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 2 Survey, Statistics and Charts in this video we are going to take a look at Topic 2, Using Data to Draw a Chart. Enter your Moodle course and click on the survey that we have already designed. We are going to answer those questions. Click on Answer the Questions. Let's say I spend 8 hours at school, 2 hours studying at home, and maybe 4 hours studying online, and just 2 hours on the weekend. Click on Submit your answers, and then on Continue, which will take you back to the course. This is how a student would see and answer your survey. We now need to analyse the results of your survey. Click on the Analysis tab and you can see the data that's been collected, which can be exported to Excel. Click on Export to Excel, and then click on OK. As you can see, the collected responses are exported to an Excel spreadsheet. You'll have to make some slight changes in order to draw a chart using this data. Delete the average headings and write the responses next to the questions and you'll have enough to draw a decent chart that can be designed using the questions and the numbers. It'll also be a good idea to delete any blank lines in between your questions. The next step is to simply highlight what you want to insert into your chart. Let's try a pie, a 3D pie. You could also display percentages with this button, and there's your survey data, easy as pie. You could also choose different types of pies, with combinations of colours, shapes and so on. You can insert such a chart into your Moodle course. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 2 Survey Statistics and Charts In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 3 Embedding a 3D Chart As you can see I've already designed an example chart using the feedback activity that we created in the previous video. Simply right click on it and then copy. Alternatively, you could also use the print screen key. You could change the title of the survey as well, simply by clicking on it and entering a new one. You can use simple applications such as Paint to work with this image. Just paste in the copy chart directly or using the menu bar edit option. Here's the chart that we're going to upload to our Moodle course. We'd better crop the image before using it and save the chart as a, a PNG file. You'll have to name the file and save it wherever convenient. Enter the Moodle course where you're going to upload this image and create an activity in which students need to draw their own conclusions from this chart. Add an activity or resource, an assignment to be precise. Complete the assignment name block, this should do for now. Complete the description block like so. 
Next, let's add that image. Click on the Insert Edit Image icon. Find or upload an image, browse, and select the image. This is the chart that we have been working with. Click on Appearance and set the dimensions. 600 should do for now. Hit Enter. Let's skip a description for this image. You can check this to determine whether or not to display a description on the courses page. Finally, click on Save and Display. This is what the activity should look like. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 2 Surveys, Statistics and Charts In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 4 Uploading MP3 Files to Charts What you're seeing is a survey about what students like and do not like to read. Questions depicted are Do you like original stories? Fiction? Fairy tales? Classic books? Educational books or junior books? As you can see in the chart, in this case a bar chart, you can follow the same procedures outlined in Topic 3 to create this new chart. In this video, we are going to upload the chart to imagemaps.com in order to add some clickable links to multimedia in it. Click on Start Mapping Your Image. You'll have to wait for a few seconds to begin. While we're waiting, let's check out storynori.com for some MP3 files. They have plenty of stories, fairy tales, educational books and junior books. Let's check out some original stories. You can select any one of them, for example, Bertie in Siberia. Here's the URL you can embed. If you click on play, you'll be able to listen to the story. Back in imagemaps.com, click on continue to the next step. Click on the rectangle button and start mapping your image. In this case, since the rectangle is 2D and the chart is 3D, it won't be a perfect overlay. Paste the URL for the story's MP3 that you copied and enter its name in the title block. Then click on Save. Add a rectangle for each of the other bars in the chart similarly and link them to stories from each of the other categories. Link them accordingly to answers to the questions. After mapping the whole image, click on Get Your Code. Click on the HTML Code tab and copy the code you see there. In the next video, we are going to use this code to embed the image in our Moodle course. If you'd like to edit the image again, click on Go Back to Edit Map. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 2 Surveys, Statistics and Charts In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 5 Embedding a 3D Chart with MP3 Files Enter your Moodle course and go to the Weekly Outline section where you want to insert the activity. Click on Add an Activity or Resource Click on Assignment and Add it. Let's quickly complete the Name and Description block. Click on the Edit HTML Source button and paste in the HTML code that will embed the image map we created in the previous video. Once that's done, click on Update. It is the code that we generated in the previous topic. Here's the final chart. Check Display Description on Course Page if you'd like to. Let's not change any of the other options, except the Submission's Max Size. Click on Save and Display. The activity with the chart should look like this. As you can see, a tooltip with the story titles that we entered earlier here when the mouse pointer hovers over a bar. Clicking on one of the bars takes us to the Linked Stories page and students can play the story from there. You can use similar image maps to link to other content such as images, other web pages and so on. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 3 Uploading and Embedding Files In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 1 creating a PDF and uploading it to Moodle. To begin with, you'll need a document in Microsoft Word that's to be uploaded to your Moodle course. In our example, we're going to convert it to PDF before uploading, but you could upload a Word doc just the same. Under File, Save As, within Save As Type, choose PDF and Save. You'll have a PDF copy of the Word doc that's now not editable. It's now time to upload the PDF file to your Moodle course. In the Weekly Outline section, where you want to upload the resource, click on Add an Activity or Resource, then on File, and then Add. Complete the name and description blocks. Something simple should suffice. In this case, let's enter Superheroes in the name block, and read about superheroes in the description block. Once that's done, navigate to Add, Browse, select the file that you want to upload, click on Open, and then Upload. 
Click on Save and Display once you're done. The activity should appear like this, and as you can see, we've successfully uploaded a PDF to our Moodle course. If you do not have MS Word, you can use a similar approach with Open Office Writer. You could upload it as is or convert to a PDF. Simply navigate to File, Export as PDF. Click on Export, Save. Within Save as Type, make sure it's PDF. Click on Save and you'll have exported this activity as a PDF. As you can see, you can use the same process as before to upload the file. In your Moodle course, click on Add an Activity or Resource and then click on File, Add. In this case, we're uploading the second file that we exported from OpenOffice. Complete the name and description blocks. It's the same process and we've now seen how to upload files from two different text editing software. MS Word and OpenOffice. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 3 Uploading and Embedding Files In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 2 Designing a Presentation with Hyperlinks and Videos Let's enter OpenOffice, click on Presentation and then on Next. You can select a presentation backgrounds such as Fresco then click on Create Choose the layout and enter animals. Insert a picture by navigating to Insert, Picture, From File. Let's use a penguin. Click on the picture and then on Open. We'll stick with penguins in this presentation. And these images will be uploaded as a resource to our Moodle course. Now navigate to Insert Slide. Type in Listen to the file. In this case, viewers will listen to some information about penguins in an MP3 file. Navigate to Insert, Movie and Sound, then click on your file and then Open. Click on Insert and then on Slide. Now insert a link and add a title, Read More About Penguin should do. Click on the other part of the slide, type in Click Here to Read. Highlight the word here and then click on the hyperlink icon. Now let's go to kids.nationalgeographic.com and look for data on penguins. Copy that URL, paste it in as the target, click on Apply and then Close. We're now going to add a video in another slide. Click on Insert Movies and Sounds and then click on the file to be inserted. Click on Slideshow. You should now see an image of a penguin, MP3 file, the link to the National Geographic website and the video. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 3 Uploading and Embedding Files In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 3 Designing a Screencast with the Presentation As you can see I've created a simple presentation in OpenOffice We'll use screencast o a screencast recorder that is available for free online to record our presentation Click on Start Recording You'll see a frame on your screen That's a portion that will be recorded Click on the record icon when you have set it up properly. Let's record the whole presentation. Click on the MP3, click on the link and watch the video. When you're finished, click on done. You can preview what's recorded and also directly publish the video to YouTube or save the video to your machine. In this case, we will publish to YouTube, but before doing this, you need to have a YouTube account of your own. Complete the title and description blocks. Penguins in detail should do. There are other blocks you could change too. When you're done, just click on Upload to YouTube. It will then take a little time for the video to upload. From there, a simple link can be embedded into your Moodle course. When the video is uploaded to YouTube, it'll have a unique URL. The uploaded video will be private by default. You'll have to make it public if you want to share it with your students. After you sign in, the video that we have just uploaded appears, but it is private. If we want someone to be able to view it, change its privacy settings and make it available to people who have a direct link. Click on Privacy Settings and select Unlisted. Now anyone with the link can watch it. Finally, click on Save. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 3 Uploading and Embedding Files In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 4 Embedding a Video Presentation in Moodle from YouTube In our YouTube account where we have uploaded our screencast 
click on share, then click on HTML and copy the embed code. You can also pick a display size or customize it further. In your Moodle course, choose the weekly outline section where you want to insert the resource and then click on add an activity or resource. Let's upload that resource now. Go to page, add, complete the name and description blocks. Within the page content block, click on the edit HTML source icon. Right click, click on paste and then click on update. We have uploaded the screencast that we have designed in the previous video. Finally, click on save and display. The presentation that we recorded should now be visible in our Moodle course. This concludes designing a presentation using OpenOffice and creating a video using it. Although you could add many multimedia elements to your Moodle course, a video is by far the most captivating way to make your presentation. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 3 Uploading and Embedding Files In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 5, creating a presentation in Google Docs and sharing it. To get started we are going to create a presentation in Google Docs. Click on Create and choose Presentation. Then select your theme. In this case we are using a colourful one. Click on the theme and then on OK. The first slide is going to be the title. Type in Collaborative Presentation. It is collaborative because our students are going to write about their favourite wild animals. I've already prepared a presentation beforehand to save us some time. It has a title and different slides where students have to write a name and the description of a wild animal. You could change the colour of the slides as well. Anything you think could improve the aesthetics of your page. Then click on Done. And when you're finished, click on Share. This presentation is designed in such a way that anyone with a link can edit it, so your students will need a link. Click on the link to be shared, copy, and then on Done. Now let's upload the presentation to your Moodle course for students to edit. In your Moodle course, select the weekly outline section where you want to insert the activity. Click on Add an activity or resource. Click on the URL and then on Add. Complete the name and description blocks. You can type in favourite or interesting wild animals. Complete the description by typing in write about your favourite or interesting wild animals. In the external URL block, right click in this block and paste the URL to your presentation. Within the options block, click on the down arrow next to the display URL and select embed. Finally, click on save and display and your presentation will now be embedded in your Moodle for students to edit. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 4 Sounds, MIDI and MP3 Files In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 1 Finding free MP3 files and uploading them to Moodle You can find free MP3 files on plenty of websites For this example we are going to use clips from freesound.org On this website you use a search field to find something you like, for example animal you can see several types of mp3 files about animals here, horses for instance. You need to log in in order to download the file and upload it to your Moodle course. Another site you could try is the British Council's website. Towards the bottom of their page you can find a link to SoundCloud from where you could embed a podcast to your Moodle course. Look for a podcast that suits your needs. Let's try one out. This podcast is about going global. Click on share. Then copy the widget code. It's what you'll need to embed in your Moodle course. In your Moodle course, select the weekly outline section where you want to insert the activity. Click on add an activity or resource. Then navigate to page, add. I've already designed a resource where we're going to embed the going global podcast. Complete the name and description blocks. In the pages content block, click on the edit HTML source icon and paste the embed code that you copied. You can also enter a title. Let's type in listen for further activities. Click on update, then on save and display. Your activity should look like this. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 4 Sounds, MIDI and MP3 Files In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 2 Editing MP3 Files 
In order to edit MP3 files, you'll need to have something like Audacity on your computer. It's a very handy tool to edit sound files, easily available on SourceForge.net. We'll then need MP3 files to edit for this example. Let's find some on freesound.org, just like we did earlier. I'm going to download some hoarse sound effects, and we can edit them with Audacity. In Audacity, navigate to File, Open, and look for your first MP3 file, the one with the hoarse sound effects. In this case, we'll add another file to the clip and merge them sequentially. Navigate to File, Import, and import the second file. Click on the audio file, and then on Open to import it. Now you'll have both files imported into your workspace. Your next step is to simply copy-paste the second sound clip in your first file. Using Audacity is not unlike using a word editor. It's as simple as copy-paste. When we play this, you can hear both sound clips in sequence. We've now combined both sounds. You can combine more sounds to your clip if you wish. And once done, save your project. Your saved work will be an Audacity project file. Let's name it Horses01 and click on Save. To use it in your Moodle course, you'll need to export it as an MP3 file. Go to Save, OK, OK, and it's successfully exported as an MP3 file. With this, we've concluded basic sound editing using Audacity. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 4 Sounds, MIDI and MP3 Files In this video, we're going to take a look at Topic 3, Finding MIDI Files and Converting Them to MP3. First up, let's look for some free MIDI files to work with. FreeMIDI.com is a good place to start. What you see is a list of national anthems from different countries. Right click on what you'd like to use and save link as to download its audio file. After you've saved the file, you'll need to convert it to an MP3 in order to use it on a Moodle page. There are plenty of freeware converters available online. For this example, I'm using a free trial of MIDI Convert Studio 6.3. Go to File, Add Files. Click on the Anthem of Australia that we just downloaded. Choose the output format as MP3. You can choose other formats as well. And then click on Convert. Since this is trial version of the software, it'll only convert the first 60 seconds. Click on Yes, and we'll have our file in a few moments. A window appears. Click on Open Folder, and you'll see the MP3 file derived from the MIDI file. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course, Section 4 Sounds, MIDI, and MP3 files. In this video, we are going to take a look at Topic 4, Creating a Playlist in Moodle. In your Moodle course, select the Weekly Outline section, where you'd like to insert the activity, and click on Add an Activity or Resource. Click on Folder, and select where you've saved the MP3 files that you'd like to upload to your site as a playlist. I've downloaded an assortment of anthems for this example. Click on Add, and then complete the name and description blocks. Within the content block, click on Create Folder. Let's name it Anthems Playlist. Open the folder, click on Browse and Finding an Anthem File. We'll name it Anthem01 so that the students have to guess the name of the anthem's country, and click on Upload. Repeat the process and add some more anthems. You can see the three uploaded anthems in the content block within a folder. Click on Save and Display, and your activity should appear like this. When students look at the resource, they can listen to the anthems using their default media player. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course, Section 4 Sounds, MIDI, and MP3 Files. In this video, we're going to take a look at Topic 5 Adding Sounds to Activities. For this example, we're going to use MP3 files of popular poems, available on the BBC website. Let's use a poem by William Blake, A Little Bloy Lost. Right-click on Download and save the audio file. We'll use that MP3 file in your Moodle course in order to create an activity. Click on Add an Activity or Resource, select Online Text and then Add. Complete the assignment's name and description block. When done, click on Insert or Edit Embedded Media. 
Then click on Find or Upload a Sound, Video or Applet. Click on Browse and look for the poem that you are going to upload. Upload this file and then click on Insert. Save and Display. An immediate player should appear. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 5 Alice in Moodle In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 1 Installing Alice You'll first need to install Alice through its official website. Alice allows you to create 3D environments where animations can bring your story to life. You can create simple interactive games as well as use its elements to prepare a video that can be shared on the web. How you use it is up to you. You can try it online or install it on your machine to use offline. There's even a universal installer, so you can set it up on any platform. Follow the installation wizard in order to complete it. For our example, we're going to use the offline installer and upload our final work to YouTube in order to embed it into our Moodle course. So let's get started. First up, using the offline installer for Windows. We'll save and run the universal installer, and you'll have to accept its terms and conditions before the installation wizard moves ahead. Let's start Alice and create a project. A simple template such as Wonderland or Grass should do just fine. Let's create a simple garden for this example. Now that we've laid the groundwork, we're going to design a theme in the next video. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 5 Alice in Moodle In this video we're going to take a look at Topic 2 Creating a Scenery in Alice. We've already set up a grass template in the previous video, let's pick up from there. Click on Setup Scene and then on the Search Gallery. Type in the word tree in the filter. Now we add some trees to your garden. Drag and drop a banana tree. You can rotate it with the mouse pointer or arrow keys. Let's add some more trees to the garden. A mango tree for example. Just click to add. Moving around your view in the garden is pretty easy too. Just use the mouse pointer or the on-screen arrows. You can add more trees in your scene if you like. The gallery below offers plenty of choices. Let's add a yellow tree next, just for a bit of colour. It's small, so let's reposition and resize it. Make it taller. From 6, let's make it 15. And just like that, you'll have a tall tree. You can do the same to add more trees. Drag and drop them in, or click to add. This concludes creating a basic scene with Alice. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 5 Alice in Moodle In this video, we're going to take a look at Topic 3, Adding Movement in the Scenery. In order to add movement to the scenery, you'd better add an actor to move, so let's set up the scene. Enter Monkey in the Search Gallery block. Drag and drop a monkey into your scene, and click on OK. Change the monkey's position, either do so manually, or click here and turn the monkey towards the banana tree. We'll make the monkey walk towards the banana tree. Click on Edit Code, and we'll take care of some light coding here. With the monkey selected, go to the Procedures tab, and click on This Golden Monkey Move. Drag and drop it below the text, Do in Order. Click on Forward, and choose 10. In Add Detail, select a duration of 10, and then click on Run. When you click on Run, your monkey is going to run towards the banana tree. The monkey doesn't quite reach it, so let's alter our scene a little. Click on Set Up Scene, and move the banana tree a little. Click on Run again, and you'll see we've got our line right this time. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 5 Alice in Moodle In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 4 Creating a video and uploading it to YouTube In the previous video we created a basic animated scene in Alice where a monkey moves towards a banana tree We'll capture this and upload it to YouTube Keep the scene that you created paused and ready We'll use Screencast-O-Matic to record the action for this example Click on Start Recording and the recorder's capture frame should appear on your screen you can change its position as required. When you're ready, click on Record. You could also add feed from your webcam if you wish. Click on Play in Alice and record the scene when the monkey runs towards a banana tree. 
When it's complete, click on Done in Screencast-O-Matic and then Publish to YouTube. Of course, you'll need an account on YouTube to upload it. Complete the required fields. When finished, click on Upload to YouTube. After a while, a shareable link appears, and we're done. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 5 Alice in Moodle In this video, we're going to take a look at Topic 5, Embedding the Video Created in Alice in Moodle. To get started, we'll need the URL that was created in the previous video. In your YouTube channel, go to Video Manager. and set your video as unlisted, so we can use its our URL. Now click on the share icon, embed, then copy that and we'll embed in our Moodle course. In your Moodle course, choose the weekly outline section where you want to insert the activity, then click on add an activity or resource and add a page. We will use our video as a resource, complete all the necessary blocks to create the page. In the Page Content block, click on the Edit HTML Source icon, add your embed code here, click on Update, and then Save and Display. And that's it, the video created with Alice is now embedded in your Moodle course. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 6 Using, Editing and Embedding Videos In this video, we're going to take a look at Topic 1. Creating a screencast. For this example, we'll use Screencast Omatic again. Let's record a new clip, something with monkeys again. Let's check out another popular online resource for content, Prezi.com. Click on Explore and look for a Prezi about monkeys. Let's look for animals plus monkeys. Here's a Prezi about monkeys. Let's use it. Adjust your Screencast Omatic capture frame. Next, click on this monkey's Prezi and we'll explore what this Prezi is about. As you can see, it's about monkeys, with different links to explore. Towards the bottom of the page, you can see a display interval. Set it to 10 seconds so that students can read the necessary information. Now let's record it. Press record to begin recording and start the Prezi. It'll play automatically. Click on done when you are. Then click on Publish to Video File. Set the video type as MP4. Click on HD and you can add notes or captions as well. Then save the video. Select the folder to save it in and type in a title, in this case Monkey, and click on Save. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 6 Using, Editing and Embedding Videos In this video we're going to take a look at Topic 2 Editing a Screencast. Let's enter Screencast-O-Matic and click on Start Recording. Since we're picking up where we left off in the previous video, our clip is still available. Let's save some time and use it. Click on Use Recording and then Publish to Video File. Keep video type the same, change the size to HD, and set a note to appear at, let's say, 3 seconds, and something simple for the demo, let's say Monkeys, then Add Note. Add another note at 10 seconds, with something different to display. Click on Save Video and save your video file. This concludes editing your screencast and adding captions in the video. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Core Section 6 Using, Editing and Embedding Videos In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 3 Creating a Playlist of Videos In your YouTube channel, go to Video Manager and click on Playlist. As you can see, there is already a playlist that I created earlier. Let's create a new playlist for this example. Complete the title and description blocks. Click on Create Playlist. And then add some videos to it by their URL. Let's start with the video that we created in Alice. Copy its URL and add it to your playlist. Then add, and the video was added successfully. You can also upload video files to your playlist. Click on Upload and select the files to be uploaded. 
Let's use our video from the previous topic. We click on the file and upload the video. In Privacy Settings, set to Unlisted. You can edit the video's title, add a description and even tags. As you can see, the video is being uploaded. And once it's done, you can add it to your playlist. Once the upload is complete, use its URL to add it to your playlist. Now we've got two videos in our playlist. We've set its privacy settings to public, but disable these three options if you don't want others to embed, comment on, or use your playlist. When you're done, click on Save. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course, Section 6 Using, Editing, and Embedding Videos. In this video, we're going to take a look at Topic 4 Editing existing videos and creating a new one. For this example, we'll use YouTube in order to edit two or more videos. We'll try some simple editing, splicing two or more videos together and adding some background sound. In your YouTube channel, go to the Video Manager. Then click on Inbox and choose Video Editor. From among the videos available on your channel, select those videos which you'd like to edit. They'll appear in the workspace below. Let's use the first, second and third video and maybe just one more. Next, let's choose the background music that you'd like these videos to play with. Click on the music button and pick out the music that you'd like. In this case, let's add some classical music. Simply pick your song and drag and drop it here. As you can see, I've already picked one. Next, use this marker to denote where in the video you'd like the background music to begin playing. Then just pause and publish. It will take a while for these videos to be processed, after which it will be published to YouTube. From there on, it's as simple as embedding its URL into your Moodle page for students to view. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course, Section 6, Using, Editing and Embedding Videos. In this video, we're going to take a look at Topic 5, Embedding Videos, Playlists or Screencasts in Moodle. For this example, we're going to embed a YouTube playlist in a Moodle page. From among the playlists available on your YouTube channel, select what you'd like to embed. Click on Share, click on Embed, and adjust its size and other settings as you need. Then simply copy the embed code and we'll add it to our Moodle course. In Moodle, select the weekly outline section where you want to insert the activity. Click on Add an activity or resource, and let's add a page as a resource. Click on Page and then on Add. Complete the name, description and content blocks. Click on the Edit HTML button and add the embed code. Click on Update and a playlist of videos should appear. Then just click on Save and Display and the YouTube playlist will be available to your students in Moodle. You can just as easily add individual videos or screencasts to your Moodle page. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 7 Repositories and ePortfolios In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 1 Enabling Flickr Public The first thing that you'll need is an API key from Flickr Enter your Flickr account, sign in and click on API Documentation at the bottom of the page If you don't have an API already, you'll need to get one Click on API Keys I've already got two as you can see But let's get a fresh one We have two options, commercial and non-commercial a non-commercial one should do for now. For the name of our application, let's use Moodle Multimedia. In the What You Are Building block, a video call should do. Read and tick both boxes and click on Submit. You will get an API and a secret key. You'll need the API key later. In your Moodle course, go to Site Administration, Plugins, Manage Repositories, Look for Flickr Public, Enable and make it visible. Enter your API key. Make sure you allow your users to add repositories and save. We now have Flickr Public enabled and visible. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 7 Repositories and ePortfolios In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 2 Design an activity using Flickr Public We enabled Flickr Public in the previous video. Let's now design an activity using Flickr. Click on Add an Activity or Resource. 
page, and then on Add. You can design an activity using several images from Flickr. In the Name block, let's use interesting flowers. In the Description block, how about look for the names of those flowers? Check the Display Description on Course Page option, and within the Content block, click on the Insert Edit Image icon. Then click on Find or Upload an Image, and within the File Browser, you should be able to see an enabled Flickr public account. In the full text field, try Daisy, and then hit Search. You can pick any of these public files. Let's go with this one. Better lower its resolution, make it lighter on our course, and we're done. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 7 Repositories and ePortfolios In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 3 Adding a Box.net ePortfolio In your Moodle course Go to Site Administration Plugins Repositories Manage Repositories And look for Box.net It's probably disabled Enable and make it visible. You'll need to set up the box.net plugin with an API key, similar to what we discussed in this section's first video. In order to get an API from box.net for your site, visit the developer page. Let's go about getting you an API key. Click on Create New Application. Pick an application name. Multimedia course for Moodle should do. And then click on Create App. Here's the API key that you need. Highlight and copy it. You'll need it to set up your box.net plugin. Click on Save. You'll have to come back to the Manage Repositories page, where Moodle has generated a URL that links your page to box.net, as you'll see in the next video. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 7 Repositories and ePortfolios in this video, we are going to take a look at Topic 4, Enabling the Box.net ePortfolio. We'll pick up from where we left off in the previous video, with Box.net enabled and visible. In its settings, you'll find a callback URL, something we'll need moving forward, so keep it handy on a clipboard somewhere. Back now to Box.net, where we had left off in the previous topic. Click on Return to your application. Here's the application we're working on. Click on Edit Application, and in the list of options, scroll down to Redirect URL, where we'll use our callback URL. Finally, click on Save Service. You can click on My Account, where you can see your repository's files. Back in your Moodle core, save your changes. To check your, whether your files are uploaded and visible, navigate to Home. Pick your course and try to add a new file to an activity or resource. Click on File, Add, and complete file name and description blocks. Display the description on your page, and then click on Add. Click on Box.net, and you should be able to see the same files uploaded to the Box.net folder. Once you've picked a file, click on Save to upload to your course from Box.net. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 7 Repositories and ePortfolios In this video we are going to take a look at Topic 5 Enabling Dropbox In your Moodle course go to Site Administration Plugin Repositories Manage Repositories We're going to enable Dropbox for your course in this topic Look for Dropbox Enable It and make it visible You'll need to have a Dropbox account for this to work just like before, we'll need an API key in order to activate the plugin for your site. This time, however, we'll need an API key as well as a secret key to create an app. Fill out your app name and a simple description. For access, you'll need the full Dropbox for it to work with your Moodle course. Click on Create and we're almost done. 
Here's the app and secret key that you'll need to add to Moodle and give your course access to Dropbox. Back in your Moodle course, add the app key to the Dropbox configuration page. You'll also need the secret key to complete the setup. We'll go back to the Moodle course and repeat the same process and paste it. Once you're done, just click on save. And we're now going to add a simple resource in order to check if Dropbox is enabled. In your Moodle course, click on Add an Activity or Resource. Choose File, Add a Resource, and click on Add. Complete the name and description blocks. Something simple should suffice. To upload content to Dropbox, click on Add, select Dropbox, and log in. Moodle will verify whether you want to allow your course to access Dropbox. Click on Allow. As you can see here, files that are saved in your Dropbox will be available here. Here you can pick a file to be uploaded to your Moodle course. Let's try it out with a simple file, the Getting Started PDF. Click on the file to select it, and uploading it is as simple as that. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 8 Embedding Social Networking Sites in Moodle In this video we're going to take a look at Topic 1 creating an account and a page on Facebook. For this example, you'll need to have a Facebook account of your own, or an account that you're going to use exclusively for your Moodle course. Go to the bottom and click on Create a Page. We'll create a page that has resources or learning assignments for our students. You'll have six categories to choose from. Let's choose Company, Organisation or Institution. Within the category, select Education. In the company name block, let's add Moodle 2.3 Multimedia. You could go through the terms and conditions, or just agree and get started. Next up, you'll have to complete your profile. You can upload a profile picture from the computer. In the About block, add some information about your page, for example, homework and resources for students. For Will this page represent a real organisation, school or government? You can select whatever's applicable to your own situation. We click no for now. For enabled ads, obviously click on skip. May as well like your page and pave the way for others. And that's all it takes to create a Facebook page for your Moodle course. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 8 Embedding Social Networking Sites in Moodle In this video we're going to take a look at Topic 2 Embedding a Facebook button in Moodle. We'll pick up from where we left off in the previous video. I've taken the liberty to add a cover image and profile picture as well as some content. Copy this part of your Facebook URL and we'll add a button from socialmediabuttons.com. Just paste the ID to get started. You'll have plenty of choices here. For example, this one. Click on it, select code, right click on it and then copy. It's now time to embed the button in your Moodle course. Let's edit the summary. Click on the Edit HTML button and paste the code. This adds the Facebook button to your Moodle page. And then click on Update and then Save Changes. Your summary section should look like this. Clicking on the Visit My Page button will direct visitors to your Facebook page, where students can check up on new activities and updates in your Moodle course. And the Facebook button appears within the summary section of our Moodle course. Another way to embed Facebook in your Moodle course is using a widget. You could try one from zelium.com, for example. You'll need a social plugin first. After that, it's as simple as adding some embed codes to your Moodle pages and saving your changes. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 8 Embedding Social Networking Sites in Moodle In this video, we're going to take a look at Topic 3, Creating a Flickr Account and Embedding it in Moodle. If you don't already have a Flickr account, you can sign in using your Facebook credentials. As you can see, I've already signed in and uploaded some pictures for this example. Pick any uploaded photo and click on Share. It'll give you a URL that can be embedded in Moodle. You can add comments or discuss the image. What you see here is a comic strip character's mind map. Next up, we'll add a Flickr button from buttonshut.com to the Moodle page. Pick any one that you like. Let's go with this one. Select a button size. You can minimise or maximise it. Next, you'll need to add a Flickr URL. It'll link the button to your Flickr image. 
Click on Link It and it'll generate the embed code that you'll need to embed the Flickr button on your Moodle page. Back in your Moodle course, click on Add a Block, click on HTML and add a block for your Flickr button. In the block, click on Edit and then on Edit HTML icon in the content block. Then add your embed code and update. Once you save changes, you'll be able to see the block with the Flickr button that links to your Flickr image. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 8 Embedding Social Networking Sites in Moodle In this video we're going to take a look at Topic 4 Embedding Twitter in Moodle First up, go to your Twitter account setting page and select widgets on the left hand side menu Next, create a new widget and customise it You can choose a theme, set the time, the link's colour then click on Done, and finally on Create a Widget. Here's the HTML embed code that you'll need to embed the widget on your Moodle page. Back in your Moodle course, choose where to embed it. In this case, let's add it below our Facebook button. Click on the Edit Summary icon, then the Edit HTML Source button, and add the Twitter widget embed code below. Then click on Update, and Save Changes. And your Twitter feed should appear below the Facebook button. Moodle 2.3 Multimedia Video Course Section 8 Embedding Social Networking Sites in Moodle In this video we're going to take a look at Topic 5 Linking to YouTube in Moodle We'll use buttonshut.com again Pick a YouTube button you like and we'll embed it in Moodle For this example, let's try this one We'll embed a YouTube channel in your Moodle page Let's try Medievalist.net for this example. It's an interesting website about medieval history. Copy its link. We'll add that to the YouTube button. Set its size. And then add the YouTube URL and click on Link It. This will generate the HTML embed code that you'll need in order to embed your YouTube button in a Moodle course. Back in Moodle, select the weekly outline section where you want to add this resource. In this case, let's add a page. Go to Add an Activity or Resource, Page, Add. Complete the name and description blocks. In the content block, click on Edit HTML Source button and add the embed code. Then click on Update. Check the Display Description on Course Page option. And then click on Save and Display. This concludes adding a button link to a YouTube channel in Moodle.